So I found me a above average male actually for this lake right now. For some reason I'm seeing a lot of tiny ones. This is a pretty good one. Pretty good one, not a good one. Those two four pounders I caught, they were both females. This right here. It's a big male. I said I wasn't gonna stop till I saw a eight and three quarters because I caught eight and a half yesterday, but I also like catching bass. So Man, now he's acting squirrely. He bit literally first flip. All right, we're about to talk about how to fish in Florida in February. You know, it's a lot different down here than it is where I live in February. Down here, we need a few different baits. The fish are in a lot different stage as far as the spawn and everything. And everything. So you can see, finally got that meal. It's a pretty good meal. It's a really nice meal, actually. That's a two and three quarter, probably. It's a good meal. In Florida, February is one of those deals where it's transition. Some of them start spawning earlier than that. A good chunk of them spawn in Florida. A good chunk of them spawn a little bit later. So Florida, they spawn for a long time. So they start really early and they spawn for an extreme extended period of time, like months and months and months. Probably the longest window of spawning of any other state. So, but that doesn't mean that's always the best way for you to catch a really big bag. You can tell by all the big tournaments, no matter what, it's usually one, not sight fishing. It's usually one by off, in offshore grass, especially now with all these anglers being so good at fishing offshore grass or flipping or anything like that. There's just a few different techniques where you can catch those big females even when they're not locked on bed. So I personally love fishing for bed fish. Some people don't think you should do it. I don't know either way, but I know it's really, really fun. So I try to base most of my Florida fishing in February around the spawn if I can. I get a really good idea of what size fish I'm gonna catch, where they are, where they're set up. They're very, very predictable whenever you find them uh, about how to find new ones and all that type of stuff. But a few different baits will help you out there fishing and a few different baits will help you in here fishing. So you gotta have a mixture of both whenever you fish in Florida in February. You need to fish offshore some, unless you catch some really, really big ones off bed. Then you can just bed fish the whole time. But a lot of times you catch some males, you catch some little ones, and you're not gonna be able to compete in a multi-day tournament strictly bed fishing. So that's just kind of my opinion and my approach to it. Is you need to fish offshore or and offshore does not mean deep, or you need to fish some of the main shorelines where they're moving in and out of, or something like that. So we'll dive into kind of what baits I keep rigged up in Florida. Some of them are super standard, everybody uses them. Some of them may be some stuff that just I use. So, you know, we'll, we'll kind of dive into all of it. All right, so whenever I'm bed fishing in Florida, my setup is consistent, no matter what. And sometimes I will have two or three setups. You know, like if I've got a big one that is in a compromised position and it's like way up behind something over something i'll you know give me a seven six heavy put 25 pound line on it if i need to flip over something and i know it going into the day but for the most part my standard open water bed fishing rod is going to be this one right here it's a seven foot three medium heavy extra fast envy rod from 13 fishing the reel is a 8.3 to 1 gear ratio 13 fishing concept c and basically these are just the, this is just a base standard deal that I use. The line is 22 pound Sunline Shooter. I want something that can hold up to the, to the impact. I know if I get one and it's acting funny, I can swing it. I can swing a really, really big one on 22 pound line. If I don't think I can, you know, if I feel like that's gonna be the easiest route to land in that fish, but pretty standard. The setup, the actual bait is gonna be a quarter ounce tungsten tied to a four alt straight shank gamakatsu hook and then just a 
flipping bait. I use white some, I use black and blue some, I use green pumpkin some, just all the different colors. But the biggest thing is you want a bait that is kind of slender so that whenever they bite it, they can get it in their mouth really, really easily. You don't want a bait that's big and bulky with a lot of appendages because a lot of times what will actually happen is they'll pick up those appendages and then you won't be able to actually get that hook in the fish's mouth the way that you would like to. So I always try to remember that. I always try to make sure that I'm using a bait that will get their attention. It's big enough to get their attention, but it's not so big that they can't get it in one quick bite if they try to. So that's my base set up. And then you just kind of go anywhere where you can see the bottom and it don't matter if it's six foot or a foot and a half, whatever. If you can see the bottom, you just troll and troll and troll until you find them. And then whenever you start finding one or two, you'll figure out kind of what pattern the actual fish are on as far as where they're actually spawning because they don't always spawn in the same time like I'm in the same place every single time and they don't spawn in the same place throughout the entire year or throughout the entire month or spawning season wherever you want to call it sometimes every one of them you find will be extremely shallow like exceptionally shallow and then sometimes every one of them you find it'll be very difficult to even see them so you just got to kind of figure out what they're doing that week and then run it try to find as many as you can so there's one right there a little pound and a half not a bad one but i saw a decent little male over here on one of these white spots you see a lot of beds in florida a lot of empty beds you just always do and the reason for that is they, they spawn for so long a lot of them are done before some start and you know just like i said earlier they spawn for a long long time i don't think that was it though So another really good thing to do in Florida is to flip. Everybody knows it. If you watched any tournaments at all, there's going to be somebody flipping in the top 10 of like every single tournament that's in Florida. It just never fails. Always, always happens. At least it seems like it always, always happens. So flipping is going to be one of those deals where you want to be close to where they're moving back and forth at. They're, either, they're going to be moving into this, this canal, like the mouth of this canal will be good. They're going to be moving into big bays. They're going to be, you know, spawning on pad stems. There's lots and lots and lots of actual different things to flip. But flipping, typically for me, is going to be, if I just had to pick a standard setup fishing everywhere in Florida, and with, with the exception of pump, punching some very, very dense, thick mats, a three-quarter ounce weight is a very, very good size very good size like you can flip the Kissimmee grass with it you can flip reeds with it you can flip everything with it except really tightly packed dense mats besides that a three-quarter will get you by pretty much as a standard so in florida if i'm not trying to punch super thick stuff three-quarter ounce weight half ounce weight something in that vicinity will do extremely well for flipping pads i go a little bit lighter typically but you know for the most part flipping pads is going to be flipping a worm when I'm flipping other stuff, I flip worms sometimes, but I'll be usually flipping a creature bait, some type of creature bait. Last year I flipped a 13 invader, a ton. Just gonna be lots of different baits for every single application. But that one weight size is really, really good. I'm using 50 pound Sunline Asagai X Plasma braid. That's the strongest 50 pound braid I've ever touched in my life. I flip everything with it, never have any problems. I've, I've literally never broke that braid, but same thing, four alt straight shank gamakatsu hook, three quarter ounce weight. I'll use a seven foot six heavy action 13 fishing flipping rod. If you need to, you can go a little bit longer. I have a, I usually have a seven nine rigged up also, but I really like that seven six. I feel like I can be more precise with it. I feel like I can, you know, make a little bit more quiet entries into the water with that seven six. So I, I really favor that seven six. And I mean, I've got them out of some very, very thick gnarly cover with that seven foot six heavy rod so not really worried about you know them getting me in a bad position because my rod's underpowered because the rod's extremely powerful you just have you know three inches to a half a foot shorter of a rod than some people use for that still though just it's, it's a lot more comfortable to fish with for the entire day so i feel like that's actually worth it 